Vale. Eh, soc antropòleg de la família dels tecnoantropòlegs. I'm an anthropologist. I belong to the uh, family of a techno-anthropologist and we'll talk about this idea, Quintivium. Uh, we are all here to change the educational system but we don't know where we are we aiming to. This is in a nutshell the map of the educational system that we have today and we have the trivium and the quatrivium which is uh, the most interesting thing for uh, corporations such as Prisa, the Tripivium, it was in the Middle Ages, but we still kept this uh, kind of a system. The Tripivium was the vernacular languages such as uh, Catalan, Spanish, French, English, and it was divided in three main areas, uh, grammar, dialectics, and rhetoric, and uh, the formal uh, languages such as mathematics and sciences. We had the arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. Under these uh, so-called art liberalis, we had the Ars Mechanica, those working with hands, uh, craftsmen, and uh, also those kind of professions. Uh, they were outside the educational system. There were some uh, workshops. You had the master, different officials, and the apprentices. Uh, these were the uh, digital technologies, those that know languages, mathematics, and they are on the upper level, and those working with their hands are uh, in the lower level, the so-called professional education. Here you've got the PISA report from 2022, so uh, the same as usual. Uh, now PISA is aiming to uh, mathematics skills and reading also. They are introducing uh, something uh, different, such as the innovation competences uh, that will uh, include uh, creative thinking in this study. We are measuring the evolution and knowledge and skills of students about the spread of technologies, ITCs and communication, blah, 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 to answer the uh, competences for creativity and innovation. Here you have a uh, PISA 2024. Five. So, you know that they've got a longer vision, uh, the same again, uh, PISA 2025 will have as main skills as sciences beyond uh, strengthening uh, mathematics and also uh, foreign languages uh, and also the mother tongue, but they also introduce. We will introduce the learning in the digital world aiming at measuring the ability of students to a self-regulated learning while they use digital tools. So. Something is happening and something is changing in the uh, PISA orthodox model as well as the OECD model. And what is really changing? This is what is changing. This is a classical scheme about uh, social sciences. So I studied anthropology in this university and they taught us that there was an infrastructure, usually what has to do with technology, it's always in the lower part of the model under this uh, first layer we had an infrastructure economic also the power relationships and the upper part we had the uh, values and the aesthetic and the ethical part of the whole system but it happens ra right now that this has changed and now technology it's seen as a value it is something uh, tightly related with the most symbolic and the upper uh, values of a human being. Anthropologically speaking, uh, culture, it is the uh, no shared knowledge. It's not only arts and humanities, which is the traditional uh, perspective. Culture to us, it is an organized system and shared through all the members, but it's uh, important to understand the layer of uh, shared knowledge. And this is uh, what we call the uh, techno uh, knowledge, emerging techno knowledge. And it is very interesting to see from the RNI uh, perspective the evolution that we experienced in the last century, the last two centuries, let's say. Modern times um, created the uh, paradigm that you have on the left side, which is an analytic paradigm uh, natural sciences, philosophy, mathematics, biology. It was the 17th, 19th century, and uh, recently, social sciences. It was very difficult for uh, natural scientists to understand uh, social sciences. But, well, we suddenly realized that we have this 
paradigm is modern psychology, anthropology, uh, sociology, and science. They are all social sciences, so they uh, analyze the things the way they are. And uh, in the end, they uh, got the facts. On the right side, you can see other different things that uh, are appearing. Some of them, they are called the uh, science of design. And another colleague of mine and myself, we studied what between brackets we call the new technologies. It's so-called new technologies, which are very weird uh, concepts such as computer science, nanotechnology, uh, synthetic biology, neuroscience. And suddenly we can see weird uh, things such as techno-anthropology, techno-politics, techno-philosophy. A few days ago, I was in Copenhagen uh, in a meeting of philosophers that they were post-phenomenological uh, philosophers. They could, they call themselves techno-philosophers. And this has to do with the contibium, something that comes after the quadrivium and trivibium. Everything began in this university. We didn't go to Silicon Valley. We were not interested in the economic and social part. We wanted to be in uh, computer scientist minds. This is what we wanted. The university that was called the Carnegie Mellon Computer University, where AI was created, uh, the MIT in Stanford, together with two anthropologists, uh, myself and Arcadio Rojo and Maria Jesus, that was the representative of the cultural anthropology of the University of Barcelona. And they they invited us to study the uh, IT crowd. And, well, we uh, get into their minds. And uh, we suddenly discovered that there was this guy, which is this creator of this university, Mr. Simon, that talked about the science of design. Or they uh, think as scientists, or maybe they think differently. And uh, this uh, guy, uh, really agrees with Simon and says that they think the way they think. It's very important to see how engineers think, because from then on we will see a new culture appearing. These people, they think the possible world, not the today world, but also the possible world. So I'm going to ask you this question from Alan Turing. Can a machine think? So this is a hypothesis. This is the question. The question is not if machines exist, but can a machine think? This machine doesn't think, but he imagines and he wonders. Could a machine think? Well, it's kind of a very rudimentary. And now they are working this six cell phone generation. Do we have this six smartphone generation? No, but it could exist in the future, right? So they didn't think as a scientist, they think differently. And this is something that it's very important if you are in the education world, because we need to talk about it, because there is a different way of thinking. There is a different culture that starts but never ends with the digital uh, technologies. This is just the entrance, but there are many other entrance and the University of Carnegie Mellon, they made an experiment and they said, what about if we teach design to all students getting into this college, not only IT crowd, but also other students and they created the role of designs and liberal professions education. It was the first university that universalized access to internet to all the university students. They created the PP Andrew. That's why they were called the computer university because that's where everything started and they made this experiment possible. A second issue or maybe topic that it's important has to do with uh, language and programming. Why it is to me secondary, this uh, topic? Well, I don't know if you realize that the main entrance uh, door, it is a digital world, but it doesn't stop there. It's much more real the biotechnology than uh, digital technology. They are uh, talking right now about geoengineering. I don't know if you know Mr. Paul Cruthen, the one that invented the concept of Anthropocene. He is a, a chemistry scientist and he's analyzing uh, the uh, CO2 uh, changes and uh, this is something that we create, so it's something anthropogenic. What would be the technology to make this uh, reverse engineering? If we are creating this atmosphere, can we modify the atmosphere? We as humans, did we think about uh, modifying uh, the planet atmosphere? No, 
we are not thinking, but maybe the moment has arrived. We should think about this geoengineering. This is something that is happening, and these guys that have this uh, technological culture is important, right? We need to start talking about this in our schools because this kind of thinking will have amazing repercussions and huge repercussions in the education system. Programming, we just began at City Lab with Scratch communities. We have a community of Scratchers here in Catalonia, which is amazing because they get the inspiration from the MIT. And the MIT has uh, this motto, Mens et Manus. It's not Harvard. Harvard, it's Veritas. For them, it's uh, Veritas science. But Mens et Manus, they create this connection between mind and body, mind and hands. This is vital because this is quite an important change from an anthropological perspective. Languages. Languages are basic for human beings. We create these symbolic languages. We are different from other beings because we are able to create this symbolic language. It's like the Matryoshka, right? The Russian dolls, the, well, uh, the language, natural language, uh, so uh, the language that we created, it's something that it's, uh, it, it belongs to human beings, but we also have the number languages, the mathematical languages that allow us to understand how a world works and natural science. But we see the appearance of a third language, the projection, the programming languages. This is quite a substantial change. I don't know any mathematician that it's not literate, that doesn't understand and uses natural languages. There is no designers or engineers that do not understand mathematics. But mathematics are not engineering, it's another kind of knowledge. And as Ernest Simon uh, said in an interview that I had with him, he said that the systems are uh, asymmetric. Dialogue between science and human art, no, no, they do not speak the same language, right? The level of complexity is very different, so they are not always the same. The cultures are different from the language perspective, so this is kind of a big challenge from an anthropological perspective. Third topic, design and social innovation. You know, uh, Americans, they are very innovative, but very conservative. They don't want to change their constitutions. They could have 24th century technologies, but the constitution belongs to the 18th century. No problem for them. Europe is something different. When we talk about the European con uh, construction and creation, that's why we talk about the Europe creation, European creation, something that is on an ongoing basis, an ongoing process. And we talked about this new concept with this very simple sentence uh, of failures. And in Hamlet from Shakespeare, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be, right? So, can computers think about it? Well, this is what we are uh, working with. Social innovation, the labs. The internet is not a technology for communication and information, not only. It's also a research and innovation technology. It, the internet was born inside the RNI system that has been spread all over our, uh, well, uh, world. And uh, But no, it's more than that. It's not a technology. The internet has a virus, which is the permissionless innovation virus. You don't have to ask for permission to innovate. You can do it straightforward. So, we quite know about these uh, things. These structures based and built on this structure can have this virus, uh, but they can also uh, be digitalized. One of the main uh, mistakes that we made uh, were digitalizing all the structures. We didn't change the old structures. We digitalized social structures, but we have new uh, structures such as the Fab Labs, Gene Spaces, and biotechnology uh, labs and many others, such as the one that you have in Brooklyn labs, also education laboratories. And this is what we are creating now. The fourth uh, topic, we need to work collaboratively through laboratories. We can do it in the school system. Yes, when we there are 14,000 research works made on a yearly basis before they get into the uh, university. It is important for sure to pass your exams before you get uh, to the university, but the research work is more important than the exams because the students they can create 
uh, degree uh, works and service and research. So there are moments where students they have to produce knowledge, not only to learn the knowledge that was given by teachers. So one of the challenges would be the next one. Can we transform educational system into RNI systems, into laboratories? So this is one of the main trends that we think that are important to take into account. We must learn also to be responsible and to be free. This person here is Hans Jonas, a German Jew. It, he was the first that he said, if we're getting into technoculture in technical civilizations, we must be responsible. And the principle of responsibility is in all uh, civilizations, uh, the deontology codes, right? When an, an engineer designs a bridge and the bridge falls apart, he's not drawing a picture, no. He throws and he builds the bridge. And if the bridge falls apart, he's responsible because he altered and modified reality. Einstein, uh, well, he described the way the universe worked the, with the relativity theory. There is such a big difference between science and technology, which is enormous. And the principle of responsibility, now we call it the responsible research innovation, was developed by this uh, Mr. Hanshana, so you must work in such a way that the accents uh, should be compatible with reality in the world. But this is a very old principle. The Cherokee in Northern America had the principle of the uh, seven generations. This is Oren Lyons, which is one of the spiritual uh, chiefs of the Ngaya tribe. He says, Make your decisions on behalf of the seventh generation coming so that they may enjoy what you have today. There is a principle of responsibility and I would like uh, some politicians to have for the seventh future generation. The native uh, tribes in the US, in the New York State, so this is a very important principle. Well, in a nutshell, design, programming, laboratories, social innovation, social responsibility, these are two principles and the foundations for this uh, convivium. Thank you so much.